are starting the transition from physical to mental. We practice asana, physical control, and we are working towards energy control, which is governed by the mind, Ashna Chakra. Because that is not easy, Hatha Yoga Pratipika has a very clever, creative way to prepare you for that. The reason why we start in the middle of chapter 2 is because chapter 1 lays the foundation, which is Yama, Niyama, Asana, and some information about the circumstances that are beneficial for practicing yoga. So we kind of have done that without reading chapter one. We will read chapter one once we are done with pranayama. So after laying the foundation with chapter one, the next step is to start with energy control, pranayama. That is the start of chapter one, uh, chapter two. Chapter 2 starts with the introduction of pranayama. Until you arrive at chapter uh, 2, sutra 21, where Svatmarama says, okay, you have been introduced to yoga, up to pranayama, but, sutra 21, one who is flabby and phlegmatic should first, before the practice of pranayama, Practice the six acts. Others who do not have these defects should not practice them. The three humors, wind, bile, and phlegm, being equally balanced in them. What Svatmarama is saying here is Pranayama only works if you are in an excellent condition where there is abundant amount of energy available. It's energy control after all. In practical terms what he is saying, if you are flabby and phlegmatic, if you are still in a tamas condition, if you're still relatively weak after what we have done so far, you're still not in a good condition, here we have six acts that can help you further to prepare for pranayama. He also says if you are in a good condition already, you practice diligently and regularly, there is no need to do these acts, the kriya exercises. The three humors being equally balanced is indicating a condition of sattva. Sutra 22. These six acts, kriyas, are named dauti, vashti, neti, trataka, nauli, and kapalabhati. Kriya is known as purification. Purification of what? Many people think it's purification of the physical body. However, we've come to the conclusion it's purification of our perception. We are all doubting Thomases and we don't believe in what we cannot see, smell, hear, touch or taste. How can you control a substance that you cannot see, smell, feel, hear, or taste? You don't believe in energy. So this is to convert us from doubting Thomases into believing Thomases. Sutra 23 is very interesting. These six acts that purify the body should be kept secret as they produce various wonderful results. 
and as such are held in high esteem by great yogins. Should be kept secret. But I have a book. It's no secret. Sutra 24. Here Doughty is described. Slowly swallow a wet piece of cloth, four fingers broad and fifteen spans long, according to the instructions of the Guru. Draw it out again. This process is called Doughty. So I brought 30 rolls of bandage, which you have to swallow. <laughs> of course I didn't. And of course you don't. Ignorant people actually do this. But consider this. Sutra 23 says, this should be kept secret because it has many amazing benefits and it is regarded, uh, it's held in high esteem among great yogis. So if the book says in Sutra 23 that this should be kept a secret, do you think the secret will be revealed in Sutra 24? No, this is a booby trap. Sutra 24 explicitly says, according to the instructions of the Guru, the Guru, which is just a title, represents somebody who knows the secret. You understand? This is a booby trap. The book is not going to give you the secret because you have to learn this under the guidance of somebody who is initiated properly into how this works and what it is designed for. Now, when you read real yoga books, traditional yoga books, you will regularly come across a sutra that tells you it should be kept secret. But why? Because we like to keep our own secretive, we create our sect, our group, and we're surrounded with mystery and secrecy, which is what some spiritual groups do. You think that is the purpose? The reason is, Yoga is truly empowering. If it is done in the correct way, starting with laying a foundation of moral principles, it leads to auspicious manifestation. You become empowered, truly, developing consciousness, insight, that other people don't possess, that makes you more powerful than other people in the end. If there is no moral foundation, what happens? You will start abusing that power, which is a reality that you can see if you look around in the world. There is black magic and there is White magic, what is the difference? It's the difference between good and evil. But the underlying principle is the same. It's people who develop consciousness, certain control over energy, and then use that in the world. And you can use that for good, and you can use it for bad. That is why you have this booby trap here because you don't want to empower people who are bound to be going to abuse this. <coughs> so we're not going to swallow a piece of cloth. We're going to start controlling energy. And you do that not by taking the text literally, but using creative fantasy.
This is a meditation exercise. You close your eyes, then you follow the tract from Ashna Chakra down to the stomach. You swallow the piece of cloth. It goes through the esophagus, ends up in the stomach, Manipura Chakra. And then you pull it out again. What you're really doing <coughs> what you're really doing with this creative visualization is familiarize yourself with energy. You remember that energy Shiva energy flows from the top down. Shakti energy flows from the bottom up. Dauti is one of not six but seven exercises. It's Asma Chakra, Manipura Chakra. If you have a strong imagination, Forget about the piece of cloth. If you're already relatively meditative, you just close your eyes, focus on nada, and then bring your consciousness down through the throat, through the chest, to the stomach. Don't go down further. We have another exercise for that. And then you go up again. Do that very calmly, very slowly, quietly, and repeat as many times as you like. We have 25 minutes for the meditation. You can spend 25 minutes on performing this visualization exercise. You don't have to. It's like with asana, you do it as long as it feels good. It's possible after five minutes you lose enthusiasm interest, then you spend the rest of the time concentrating on Nada. This is called Gauti. Gauti on its own doesn't have much meaning. But this is the first exercise you get. It maybe, probably doesn't make much sense yet, because you cannot see the whole picture yet. And that is the reason why last week we talked about yoga practice, asana. There were these six qualifications that are needed to make yoga succeed. One of them was faith. You have to have faith. Which means give it the benefit of the doubt that there is indeed such thing as energy and possibly that energy can be controlled, manipulated. Then the next two weeks, you can conclude for yourself whether it makes sense or not. But based on this first exercise, that's still difficult. We give it the benefit of the, tri of the, of the doubt and we just, we just give it a try. Sutra 25. By the efficacy of doubting, Bronchial diseases, asthma, flea, leprosy, and similar skin diseases, and 20 other diseases brought on by phlegm, which is tamas, disappear. There is no doubt about this. <coughs> Energy follows thought. The research project with the power of uh, pregnancy through prayer shows that, indeed, energy follows thought. Based on that principle, we now stimulate energy between the head and the stomach. Energy follows thought means that if you concentrate on a certain part, you are actually stimulating energy there. Sutta 25 tells us that if you do Dauti and you do it regularly, not just once, 
the stimulation of energy in this part of the body will lead to an improvement of condition of that part of the body. The diseases described here are typical diseases of this part of the body, especially the airways and the heart and the 20 other diseases they say conveniently. Just generally, overall, the condition of this part of the body. After the break, we have another one, Vashti. You will see that deals with another part. Okay? Give it the benefit of the doubt. Just play with the concept and observe. See if you feel anything. Do you feel energy? Do you feel... What is energy? How do you feel energy? It's a whirl. It can translate in a sense of excitement. We will clearly explain that when we talk about Muladhara Chakra, which is at the bottom, where there is a lot of energy available. Okay? Just, let's just give it a try. Uh, excuse me, Ronnie. Yes. So, so, I should not picture a ball going through my head to my stomach. Yeah, if you find it difficult to perform, you can just literally imagine swallowing a piece of cloth that goes down the esophagus down to the stomach, where you let it soak, and pull it out again. Eventually, you want to come to the point where you can let go of the visualization, and you just focus on, on the tract between the head and the stomach without, without distractions, without visualization. But in the beginning, if you find it difficult to focus on that part, you can literally visualize, imagine swallowing a piece of cloth. The negative uh, effect of that can be nausea, because it is kind of disgusting. Now look at the look at the common sense here. Yoga is designed to heal. Yoga is designed to lead to harmony. But what do you think will happen if you literally swallow a piece of cloth? Do you think that is healing? Do you think that is harmonizing? I think, on the contrary, it's quite damaging if you do that. It disturbs the stomach. There are people who do this for medical reason. In Ayurveda, for example. But what you really do, the stomach is a very delicate organism, organ, with very violent juices to digest the food that you eat. So the stomach has a lining of, of, I think what you call it in English is mucus, a, la a layer of slime that is designed to protect the tissue of the stomach. What do you do when you swallow a piece of cloth and take it out again? Is you remove not only from the stomach but also from the esophagus and the throat, you remove the protective layer. Now if you do that once, it will be restored, but if you do that on a ritual basis, which is what usually what we do when we exercise, we do it on a ritual basis, your body is totally, ends up in total chaos because your body doesn't know anymore what to do. It starts overproducing mucus because you keep removing it. So in the end, it can end up in ulcers and, uh, and even worse, damage to the stomach, throat, and esophagus. So if, if you contemplate that, 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 cannot, that can never be meant to be like that. Yoga is not designed to harm. Okay? Let's give it a try. <coughs> 